Today we're gonna take some work gloves, some PVC pipe, and some of this wire fur, an old pair of shoes, and make some werewolf feet. Interested? Here we go. This build is a follow-on to the werewolf gloves. I used the same techniques to make the nails, so you can check the other video out for that. You're a werewolf, you were working out in the gym. You didn't realize there was gonna be a full moon outside, and wow, look at that. You pop through your sneakers. The thing about the sneakers is you can change it up. You could use black sneakers, but I really wanted to kind of offset that. You could take the fur, and you could go to the next step here, and just take the fur, and I guess hot glue it over here. There, now you got a whole different look for those werewolf shoes. That's more authentic, I guess, but I wanted something I could walk around in, run around in, be comfortable, and not have to worry about, you know, some of the really lame shoe covers. They look fake, they, well, this is fake, but they look more fake or they just don't look functional, or they don't look like you could actually walk around too far on them. This gives your feet the support it needs, and yet gives you that look. And in some pictures, if you look online, Costumes has the werewolf mask, right there. It has the hands, and then it goes with regular shoes. Come on! If your hands are going to go werewolf, your feet have to go werewolf. It's kind of an homage to Teen Wolf. You got the same level of detail that you have with the hands, except you're coming through the shoes. And then I'm using a combination of some painted paddle wire. I, if I could get black, I would, but I just happen to have green, because green blends in better than silver to extend out into this area. And then I'm starting with this bendable fur. It's got a core of metal. What I did is I roughed out five toes or whatever you wanna say. What I did is I just doubled them up and twisted and there was a toe. This comes in a nine foot length and you can easily make both feet out of that and then have a bunch left over for a tail if you so desire. You know, werewolves I guess have tails. So maybe I can make one of those in the future, who knows. And then it's protruding out of the shoe. I kind of just roughly marked where I wanted things to come out. Like I want a slice there, and then a slice kind of evenly through here. So that will be a little toe, the other toe, this toe, and then something busting out over here. Just evenly. These are old shoes, so I did. you can kind of see what I did. So here we go, we're gonna cut into the shoes. I'm gonna do a straight cutter build. These are some of my favorites right here. It's got a nice heavy metal handle with a little bit of rubber grip there. And this retracts really well. It's got this nice little metal extension. You'll see that in the future. And then if you wanna bring it up, you just do that. So I'm gonna come in here after I've cut it and I'm just gonna slice into it pretty aggressively. Right there, right here. Because remember, as a werewolf, your toes pop right out of this shoe. And you cut it right down in there, give plenty of room. Then this one's kind of the troublemaker. This is the big toe or whatever. So open those up. I have to slice that one a little bit more. And then you can see what I did here. I'm gonna put this lace back, but you needed access to this shoe, so I'm gonna take the lace out. So you see I got five toes here, and then this is where I've twisted it off. I'm just gonna come back over here like this. To kind of bury it a little bit and then just take some wire cutters and pop it off. I'm not gonna cut through the 
fabric. So when we cut through there. So there's your toes. And then you just come back through here, pull the tongue of the shoe up, and you're gonna feed that through this. So this is the baby toe, this is the this is gonna be the big toe. So we'll just push one through like this. Push the next one through. And you want to give plenty of room so you can actually wear the shoe. If you if you have an older shoe that is maybe a size or two bigger than your feet, that might be the way to go. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Baby toe on this side. Losing my orientation there for a second. So you can see we can pull them right through. Nice long toes. This one broke. <laughs> I guess I broke that toe. But then, you know, I was trying to figure out how I was going to put the nails on. And these looked a little too nice. So then I came in and said, well, why don't I take a glove, cut the fingers off, and then just repeat what I did for the gloved hand on the toes. So this is what I did. You can see I just cut them all off for the long pinky and the thumb, slightly different cut. And then I'm just gonna sew them together with black thread. But before I do that, I'm going to extend it out a little bit. So let's see. Let's try with, we'll start the pinky first. The little toe, baby toe, whatever you want to say. So you come in here, you cut the figure of the glove off. Just like that. And I guess you could put them on here. But what I was finding is, you got this little gap here. So I took, this is where the paddle wire, and you can get black, obviously. And I'm using a cotton ball, putting the, kind of twisting it into the paddle there, and then I'm gonna put it in the finger to extend it. Jam it in there like that. And just weave it in here just to help keep the extended toe in place. And then I'm just actually coming in here and see where this black cloth is. I'm actually cutting some of that away. Pull that off. Get that toe back in place. And then I'm going to sew it up with the black thread. So you can see where I've stitched it already. I'm actually going through the rubber and I'm, and I'm making sure that I push the thread through the wire to make sure that I'm getting it integrated in there really well. And don't worry about this because you're actually going to cover that up with more fur and then the nail. But right now I'm going to just take all the fingers of the glove and sew them into the toes. I don't know, it sounds kind of freaky, doesn't it? But it's working. So I'll catch you back up when I get all the toes done. Here's a couple of tips now that I've done a whole bunch of digits. You take the cotton ball and you put it in here in the middle, you stick it with the sharp end and then you just twist it. Like that. Take your
and then you just put it in here like this and that will keep it nice and firm now what I'm doing to make it extra special is hitting it with a little glue let me take the finger of the glove and I push that down in there and then what I do is I actually unravel the digit here and that helps bury the the other wire and then I push the end of the fuzzy wire into the glove before I start sewing it. I'm not sure I showed that before. And then I just rotate, twist that up and that embeds that dark green wire in there and gives you a nice little toe that you can now manipulate. And then I fold this in here on both sides and then sew it on both sides. As with the hands, you just take some rapid fuse and you put all the nails on. Here's the back. So it's a lot like the hands. One of my sons said, well, why use the white shoe? You could use a darker shoe, like a black shoe, and just fully integrate it. But again, what I was looking for here is an homage to Teen Wolf. You know the movie Michael J. Fox? It's kind of a funky werewolf alternative. And then just press it on. Hold it for just a bit. And it'll stay on there probably forever. So make sure you got it in the right place the first time. You can peel it off after if you can get to it before 30 seconds. But after that it gets a little dicey. All the nails are glued on and depending on how you feel and how much time you have before you need to have this project together, that's completely okay. But since I've already done the additional fur on here, similar to what I did for my glove, I'm just gonna finish it off with little strips of fur and hot glue it in place. Now the extra fur is in place and you just Scruff it up. There you go. Now, I've been thinking maybe go in here and tie in the toes a little bit or just leave them the way they are. I haven't decided yet. Another option, you can say the heel is busting through the back. It come out perfect, but it's good enough to give an impact. So it shows that the foot is pretty darn big when you turn into a werewolf. To give your, the roundness you need for this, you just make a little pocket between the palm of the glove and the fur, and then you just stuff in two to three cotton balls, and then just kind of glue the edges here and seal it all up so that it looks like a heel. Starting over here, put a knot in here, just ran a thread, you can barely see it, maybe right there on the bottom. Thread there, thread there, thread there. And just ran it through all the digits. And then I'm gonna tie it off on this side. Have to agree with my critics. Kind of containing them together, just through one loose string, tied off on this digit and this digit, but allowing these guys to float around a little bit does really kind of make it look a little better and then you can adjust it remember these all have a piece of wire running in them so you just get it together like that and it'll, it'll naturally flow tie it off and there you go complete build really like that could replace it with a black shoe run some fur on top or around it to make it a little more let's call it traditional the traditional werewolf totally up to you but I kind of like the throwback werewolf gloves werewolf shoes and you're ready to go to your next werewolf party. 
Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more cosplay builds and all sorts of crazy things. Coming soon.